they knew that they were the main event and they never disappointed. The two of those guys alone, you could put together a highlight reel film that probably lasts a half hour. Are they playing to go? Running to me, Archer, you win it, each other, and here they go! Running. When you came in this building, you knew something was going to happen, whether it was me or not. You know when you get into the building and security guards and whomever you may run into asking questions, you're going to go tonight, you're going to get them tonight? <laughs> I can see his melon from here. Ty kind of brought that aura with him of being that super tough guy that you kind of had to make sure that you're on your toes. Hey, ready to go with Domi! You know, I was already a, kind of a born street kid fighter. I did it the most in the history of the game. Here they go, firing punches at one another! Whoa, this is a, quite a scene. Down on the ice they go with Ryan Domi. How you doing, buddy? What's up, bro? Great to see you. Ryan Domi, let it all hang out! Oh, and they've been waiting for that one for a long time in both Buffalo and Toronto. How's your hands? Hands are good. Yeah? Never have a problem. Honest guy. When the weather's bad, I don't know. Well, they swell up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's too. not normal. <laughs> PD doesn't have that problem. Never hit anybody. <laughs> I heard that. Hey, I'm right here. Right? Face <laughs> swells up a little bit. Hey, other than that, I okay, feel good. Yeah, have a seat, please. Hey, okay. Yeah. This is amazing for me to be sitting here with you guys. Do you have any idea why you're here? Looking back at something that, uh, touched a lot of people. It was something that was pretty special in two organizations past that, uh, you know, we were able to be a part of and maybe take a look back and see what it was all really about. Let's do that. Let's take a look back and see what it was really all about. Ooh. I don't know who was the better fighter. And you waited as a fan for those two two guys to get on the ice. Domi are going at it, and they've had their moments. They were the main event. They knew pretty much every game they were going to fight. You just didn't know when. Here they go again. Domi and Ray. They've already gone once, and now they're going to go again. <laughs> Everybody knew about Rob Ray and how good he was at fighting. He absolutely decked him. He's just so tough and throws left. It's Domi with the upper hand. He had on them like, just like concrete. Here they <laughs> what do you think when you see that? I think, and I look back now and I go, why? <laughs> <laughs> but you understand it. You saw it and you listen to the people and the guys, even the players, how excited they get, you know? Yeah. And it was something they looked forward to because they knew it was going to happen. <laughs> and I still look back at that it's an entertainment side of the game that it's disappearing. But I think we understood there was a reason for it not only for the game itself, but for the people that were here expecting it. I agree. And it set the tone for the game, really. Yeah. I think, you know, it kind of calmed everybody down once we got it over with. We're the only two that played every game of our careers thinking we might have to fight that night. It was just a different uh, time. And when you police the game the way we used to, you know, guys knew that they couldn't take advantage of our teammates, especially the stars. We're talking about two of the toughest players and two of, the, two of the best fighters. To watch these two guys go at it, there were some good ones. And you start realizing, boy, these both these guys can really throw it. And they both traded punches. You know, nobody was just cleaning up on the other guy on a regular basis. They both respected how tough each other were. And I think they respected the fact that they knew that at some point, if a game was going sideways, they were responsible for trying to change the way the game was going. If they're down two, I knew he was coming. When you knew you had to or you knew it was yeah. it was always there. It was just more of a respect thing. Except and when you put your finger up. That was like, I, I literally yeah, I, I wanted won. to chase him down the hall. Did I? Mm. Yeah, but what about when you're going and you're well, getting at the air? I never did that to you, only oh, probing. Oh, it's watch. And that's where we stand. Top of the circle, left side, and here we go with Ty Domi and Rob Ray, the heavyweight bout just getting underway. <laughs> And the oh. fists are flying. Look at Rob Ray coming in with the hard rights with those heavy cylinders. I love your commentators, too. They're always, Ray, how do you win? Well, they don't lie. They tell the truth, OK? <laughs> so who picks that? That's, that was as even as even. Oh, look at this. No, but he always did that. Yeah, but we were on the road, too. I was trying to sell myself for later. And you fought the night before. You can hear the crowd in the background. They love Ty Domi. 
pumped, eh? He's pumped. But the announcers, if you listen to all your fights, you would have thought I never got a punch in. And Ray's pounding away on Domi. Now you work with all these guys, eh? <laughs> so you're saying you don't feel like you won it. You're just saying no. that you survived. That's a, that's a draw. Okay. Okay. I got one nothing, Razor. Moving on. Fight number two. <laughs> Stir the pot. Ty Domi and Rob Ray. Now, as fights go, this was a pretty good one. A little scrapper, number 32, comes back and gets the bald-headed wonder with a few right bald -headed Oh, wonder. that is wrong. Uh, bald-headed wonder. <laughs> so you watched that one. Who won that one? Who do you think? Nobody. <laughs> the fans? Same. Are we watching the same fights here, gentlemen? Do you know what I did? I have, I've asked Ty twice now, Razor, what the record is, and yeah. he still hasn't answered. You can try getting a score on me all there's, you want. There's, there's, I will never. I don't judge. Uh, you know, I've, there was no winners. So there was no there, losers. Yeah, I, I but said, I think I was 12 and 1. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. If you want, if we look, you'll see. Now that you're a little Razor, older, you're going to be able to sit back and you're going to go, I, yeah, I, you're I, right. You know, I always told you then, and I'll tell you now. You know, I, you couldn't hurt me with the pillows. No, I... <laughs> Did he throw pillows? You know, I used to we, say that. I used to drive him nuts. What do you think of that? Little scrapper. Were you a little scrapper? We, we were both small. We were the smallest guys doing that job. I was the smallest. He was the second yeah, smallest. Yeah, but I was, an, what, an inch taller? After you'd fought Razor twice now, what are, you, what are you thinking about him as a fighter and how tough he is? Oh, I knew he was tough. But I knew he was a player too. He was actually a good player in junior. He wasn't a fighter in junior. <laughs> I chased him all around in junior. <laughs> and I wouldn't fight you. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. Because I didn't fight that way. Oh, this is when the jersey comes off. This is when the jersey comes off. This is when he outsmarted us for a little while. Believe it or not, I had abs once. <laughs> what are you supposed to do there? You tell me. You tell me what you're supposed to do there. I could I, not hold on to anything. I always just look for that advantage because a lot of times Yeah, she got in shape too. So. Yeah, look at it. The mullet and the chiseled. What's going on here? Yeah, just a little discussion about he's probably <laughs> mad because the jersey came off. When he did that, you know, it was it was a great move. I gotta be honest with you. But there was no there was literally as soon as you come out of it, there's you know, unless you grab his hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the next time we played actually I said, if it actually comes off, I'm gonna actually grab it and try and get it over his head. This is the first fight with the Leafs, Ray Domi. Here we go, to the odd. Domi are gonna get it on over in front of the penalty box and Ray jams him into the boards. Trying to catch up with him, now he's gonna be on the penalty box. Whoa, I forgot about this one, Ray. Ray trying to get an uppercut into your lap, to oh. Ray to another right. Take it off, take it off, take it off. <laughs> Here goes the hand. Here's another one. Here goes yeah. the hand. <laughs> There's that home. You know, it's like, come on. Well, that jersey's got to be pissing you off right now. I wore a tie down every every fight, right? Uh, yeah, I Since never, junior. I never did till, Since till we had to. What did you think when the jersey came off, though? Did you think it was a like a let's call it a greasy move? Well, it was a smart move. I think it just happened, and it was like I, I it worked, and it was like holy, maybe if we just make this big enough. Oh, it worked on me. Yeah. Oh, well, there it goes again. Look at him tripping on the jersey. I was going to actually give up fighting him because it was getting painful. That's why I get a few in early because as soon as it came off, it was like you're at his mercy. Ray, a better effort to start this one. Oh. Just owning a tie. When did the league change it, by the way? It was 95 or 6. Was it? The Rob Ray rule came into it. Was it called the Rob Ray rule? That's pretty much what they said. The Rob Ray rule, I think, was put in place because uh, the opposition was tired of fighting this really tough guy uh, who was shirtless and you, you can't hold on. They had to get the tie down. You had to make sure your jersey didn't come over your head. Everybody saw what happened when Rob Ray's jersey came off. The other guy was in trouble. Rob was a forward thinker. He was ahead of the curve and, and he was doing uh, what he felt was best to give him the best advantage in a fight. And, and I can, can only commend that. When that rule was put in, I knew it was going to change his method on how he was going to fight. The first fight after that rule came in was with him. Here we go, and here we go. Rob Ray has dropped the gloves. He's trading it with Ty Domi. Another right. Oh, he's a tough dude, this guy. The story about Ty was that he has a hard head and you couldn't hurt him. So. Oh, are you kidding me? He it has made a hard me look, head. My head have you looks seen small. some of those punches I hit him? 
and he would sit there. <laughs> oh, he was tough. Well, see how he's bringing the jersey up in front of my face there? The game was all tied up, and there I am. I'm stuck, and I'm going bad spot. And there's another left. Pissed up and Ken, Pissed up. What makes you think you won that one? <laughs> it comes back to the, the showmanship. Here they go! Hey, and go! Rob's a legend in this town. You can play three times a game your whole career, and if you're a tough guy, you're the savior. You have 20% of the people coming just to watch a Rob Ray Ty Domi fight. The anticipation on the bench was was real. It was it was crazy. Those guys are passionate hockey players that did everything they could for their team, and you you respect that. I loved it first of all because I didn't have to fight Ty Domi. No, I, I didn't. I never once. I was in Buffalo for seven or eight years. It was Rob's guy. Those guys fought dozens of times, and it spans back to sharing a hotel room together and, get, and getting in a fight. We were roommates uh, in a draft together. We had the same agent at the time, and you know I got to know him. He was from a small town in a farm, farmer's town. We picked him up off the highway, and uh, we fought in the car on the way to the draft. And then you know we we wrestled in the room the whole time. Yeah. So legend has it, legend has it, Razor kicked your ass in the uh, in the hotel room. You didn't say that, Razor. I didn't, I didn't say, say that. that he said that. Are you out of your I mind? I said legend. He is a legend. No chance I, he didn't say that. He would never no, say that. No, you know what I did say? I said you talked a lot. I talked a lot. You talked a lot. And that whole I, ride from my house to Montreal, you talked a lot. But I think it was nervous. Yeah, I was. I, was I think a, you were nervous. I was a little excited. There. Yeah. I was excited going yeah. to draft. I don't know about so was you. I. I didn't you, expect you, you, to be you know, drafted. Yeah, exactly. I was, I was just a I was happier for you to get drafted than me. Do I you know. remember that? When we were in the hotel room, we wrestled, and you remember you banged your head off the nightstand, and we were like, "Oh my God!" And we call Rolly, and we're going, "Hey, uh, Ty, just uh, we just," and he's like, "Ah, don't worry about it. We're gonna we're gonna take care of it." And then that was the end of it. But do you remember, I looked better than Link Gates. Yeah, oh my God. Link Gates. Link Gates <laughs> showed Link up Gates. at the draft. Link Gates. It was supposed to be me or Link Gates on who was like going to be the first tough guy to go. He had two black eyes just dragging down like this. And he's just, and he was a man and we were kids. Yeah, so he really was. You're looking and you're going, oh my God. Getting a, in a brawl at a you bar. Got in a brawl. <laughs> That's the way it was then. Yeah. Do I think Razor and Domi hated each other? Sure they did. <laughs> At least I would, when you fight like that, you don't like each, you don't like somebody. I mean, they were nasty fights. Come on. Hot training punches. Ray and Domi just tee it all down on the ice. Oh, brother, it's over. You talking about heavyweights that went in enforcers that did their role. It was, that was the role of the game back then and that time. And, um, those aren't fun times to be a hockey player, but they're part of, they were part of the game. My teammates respected Razor, right? Because they know how difficult the job it was. And uh, say what you want, we joke about it now, but you know, it, it, it was arguably the toughest job in hockey. Domi and Ray, here we go! Domi and Ray, they're still trying to smoke one another. They both lost their helmets. Ray gets one in, and Domi went down. You know, these guys keep a lot of players in the league, give them working room. It's not a pleasant job. That was uh, part of the way the game was played uh, in, in my era, and you have those guys, you, you certainly feel a lot more comfortable on the ice because we knew we were protected. Ryan Domi letting it all hang out. Now they get in close and the linesmen get in there. Holy macro. You know, I think those two understood what their jobs were and what how competitive they wanted to be at doing it, but I think there was a genuine appreciation for what each of them had to do regardless if it was against each other. We weren't fighting to please the fans. We are doing it for our teams. It was such a tool in the game that meant so much. There was no better compliment than a teammate coming up and saying, hey, thank you. Thanks for bailing me out of that situation or thanks for getting yeah. them off my back. Yeah. I think it, it's, it's a lot deeper than that what most casual fan or person uh, would understand. At Toronto, all those years, with Matt Sundin, he was the one who always, if someone touched him, I would go after him and fight him. He would, he would go out of his way to, to say thank you. And I think that really touched me and made me want to do it even more for guys like yeah. him. And you can't control what media thinks or says or anything like that. Yeah. But I think if, if you walk away from the game and 
99% of the guys that you played with could say that, hey, he did his job. He was a good teammate. That's a win. Last fight, 13 of 13, gentlemen. Ray Domi. Look at the lines for the lines and shaking his head now. That was a special moment. Just that we both did that at the end, I remember that. Like for me, I knew that it was winding down and it was like, hey, this is probably it for me that season. And it was like, hey, okay. You know, as soon as it happened, it was like, man, this is probably it, this is <laughs> over. That fight happened because of the score. It wasn't because we hated each other. When you watch Ty Domi and Rob Ray fight, you sometimes forget it's real. Every time there was so much energy to their fights, I think there was just a lot of respect. And they, they might have hated each other when they were fighting just to make sure they had that energy, but I believe they had a, a, the utmost respect for each other. You were in a position where you're in big markets. When you're talking Toronto and New York and still be able to perform for that long at that top and be respected, but always having that respect for the game, never crossing that line of, you know, being that jerk guy. It was push it, have fun with it, but know there was a level of respect that you couldn't cross. And I think that was the best part. Thank you, man. Thank you. Being simple guys, hockey players, I think uh, we try and, you know, pass that on to our kids and, uh, because we don't want to just be known as fighters and, you know, throughout our careers and the respect that I, I had for him. If they actually know what he did for charities and what he does for NHL M and I now, it says it all. And it's, it's very emotional for me. And when you ask me uh, why, I, uh, why I came here today, how can you pass this up? This is pretty special, so. I, I truly believe that uh, we are here for the rivalry, not for the fights, but for the size of the hearts that you guys had. I truly believe that. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. You can get up there, baby. I'm boy. not hugging you. Yeah, you are. Get over here. I'll awesome. hug this man. <laughs> thanks, guys. Hey, thank you. Seriously, thanks for thank coming. Thank you. No, my pleasure. That was awesome, guys. Thanks.